welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give an overview of what you can expect when taking National 5 Chemistry. Your experience will be broadly similar everywhere, but obviously all schools might teach things in a different order and assessment in different schools will vary. The National 5 Chemistry course gives you a good overview of different areas of chemistry. In addition to chemistry knowledge, you will also develop research skills, enhance your practical and numeracy skills. The course is divided into three units that can be taught in any order or mixed together. The first unit is Chemical Changes and Structure. This unit covers the rates of reaction, which looks at different ways to change and measure rates of reaction. It also looks at calculating average rate of reaction. Atomic Structure and Bonding looks at the structure of atoms and how this leads to the structure and properties of different substances during bonding. Chemical formulae introduces the standard rules and processes used by chemists to represent substances using chemical formulae, in addition to the related calculations that are required to carry out reactions. Acids and bases covers formation of acids and bases and their reactions, including equations. Some practical skills that you are likely to cover in this unit are collecting a gas to measure rate of reaction, setting up electrolysis, titration technique, pH testing methods and filtration. Unit 2 is called Nature's Chemistry and this focuses on the chemistry of carbon. The hydrocarbon topic introduces you to different families of compounds and their properties. The systematic naming rules are covered in this unit. Everyday Consumer Products focuses on two other carbon containing families, alcohols and carboxylic acids, looking at their structures, properties and uses. You will learn to carry out experiments and calculations that allow the calculation of energy released when fuels are burned. Unit 3 is called Chemistry and Society. This unit brings together some of the things you've learnt about and puts them into the context of everyday life and applications. The metals topic looks at structures and reactions of metals. It goes on to look at more detailed reactions such as redox reactions involved in electrochemical cells. Polymers takes some of the molecules that were met in Unit 2 and shows how these can be used to make plastics. After introducing two important industrial processes, the neutralisation reactions covered in Unit 1 are revisited in the fertiliser topic. Nuclear chemistry looks at nuclear reactions and how to represent these using equations, and half-life calculations and the different uses of isotopes are also covered. Practical skills that you are likely to cover in this area are flame tests, building electrochemical cells and preparation of salts. The chemical analysis topic is often covered throughout the course through the practical techniques that you'll learn. The formal assessment for SQA is split into two parts, an exam and an assignment. Your exam is two and a half hours long, it has 100 marks and is split into two sections. There are 25 multiple choice questions and 75 extended response questions. The extended response answers include answers of one, of one or two words, a sentence or two, calculations, graphs, diagrams and open-ended questions. The best way to prepare for this is to practice past papers which can be accessed on the SQA website. The assignment is carried out in class and is worth 25% of your grade. There is a total of around 8 hours for your assignment, 90 minutes of which is dedicated to the writing of your final report. You will be given a selection of topics to choose from and then you need to formulate an aim for your assignment and plan and carry out an experiment to gather some data. Your experiment can be carried out in a group as necess if necessary but you must take an active part. You need to research background chemistry for your topic and find a second source of data to compare to. Once you have your experimental data, second source of data and background information, you'll be able to write a report on your findings. You're allowed to take some things into your write-up session, for example your candidate guide and your experimental raw data. However, you can't take in any drafts or example calculations or graphs. You write up your report under exam conditions and it will be sent to the SQA for marking. I hope that you enjoy your National 5 Chemistry course. I have lots of helpful videos that you can use throughout the year and more will be added, so subscribe to be notified when they're uploaded. Follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for updates on new videos and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for daily flashcards. Bye for now!